Well, a warm welcome to this talk, and I'm very pleased. I've been looking forward to this. Professor David uh, Anderson has come on to the show. So, um, well, well, welcome, David. Thank you for coming. Thanks very much for having me, John. Now, you've had a lifetime in medicine. You're a consultant physician. Uh, you've been a professor of endocrinology, a medical researcher, a medical author, a medical teacher and lecturer, and member of the Royal Society of Medicine, member of the American Endocrine Society. We could go on, but I think that establishes your credentials. So it's, it's great. It's great that you've come on. Well, I, I've been around for a long time. Um, much of it in medicine and now in retirement, which is in fact extremely busy as it is for you, I think. In fact, yours is particularly busy because you've just written a, a new book about vitamin D and the great biological reset, uh, reset co-written with gastroenterologist Dr. Uh, D David Grimes. So perhaps, perhaps, David, if you don't mind, start us off with a little background on, on vitamin D3. What is vitamin D3? Um, why is it important? Where do we get it from? Well, uh, we get it from the sun, ultraviolet light, of a particular wavelength acting on our skin. And um, it, that is really the main natural source of it, unless you live in Alaska uh, and, and live off fish, where you get it from the fish eating the plankton. But um, most of us uh, have a deficiency of sunlight. And the reason that you and I have lost our original genetic pigmentation as we move into the northern hemisphere is that the dangers of vitamin D deficiency are much greater. Uh, down in, in Africa, the main uh, reason for having pigmented skin is to act as a sunblock, and it's a very effective sunblock, and to stop your skin burning. But when you move away from uh, latitudes that are where the sun is overhead all the time, you get progressively more at risk in the winter. So uh, vitamin D, uh, the, the, the ultraviolet light, UVB radiation, acts on the B ring of the precursor sterol, which is called 7-D hydrocholesterol, and cleaves the B ring. And this opens the molecule up to be extremely flexible, um, and uh, this it makes it it's an absolutely unique sterol. Now, vitamin D uh, produced in the skin is absorbed into the bloodstream. It's it's got one hydroxyl group, uh, uh, and it travels in the circulation. And in the liver, another hydroxyl group is added, the twenty-five hydroxyl group. And that makes the substance, that's, the substance is now called calcifidiol. And this, is the, this in itself is not biologically active, but it's the major circulating reservoir form. It binds to a specific a plasma binding protein, and it's there for all uses of vitamin D, of which the most obvious, and the one that uh, comes into the endocrine system, is that it acts under the control of parathyroid hormone acting on the kidney cells. It acts as a circulating hormone. That is to say, it's absorbed into the bloodstream and goes and acts at different sites. It acts on the gut and acts on the bone. But, in fact, the problem with just... You must not calculate the amount of vitamin D that you need based on just preventing you getting rickets which is how one, one of the early th things that was discovered uh, that, that uh, people in the north of England, children and with pollution, etc., like, and, and not getting out in the sun, were presenting with this bone disease or rickets or osteomalacia in adults. Um, but that is the greediest system of the body. It's really important for your ionized calcium to be controlled and that's what the parathyroid glands do. They secrete PTH, parathyroid hormone, and then they're basically measuring the amount of ionized calcium in the blood. 
And if you're at a critically low level of vitamin D, which most people are, well over half the population, probably 90% of the population uh, at the end of winter, are D deficient. And they don't have enough for the other functions of vitamin D, which a very important function is uh, con concerning our resistance to infections and our resistance to cancers. Because uh, vitamin D is it, it, it's absolutely critical for these functions. And how it acts is that uh, in the immune system, it's not getting the vitamin D from the kidneys. It's getting the precursor from the blood, from the general pool, and putting a 1-hydroxyl group on it, which is what, what happened uh, with parathyroid hormone in the kidneys. And that makes the active form within that cell. And it also has receptors. And it binds to those receptors and acts with a vitamin A receptor. It's complicated, and I've tried to explain it fairly simply in the book. Uh, but this is absolutely critical for uh, the control of something like 3% of our body genes. It's an enormously important factor. It controls at least a thousand genes. And the, the uh, madness of what has happened in this so-called COVID-19 pandemic is that it was obviously two pandemics. It was the winter pandemic of vitamin D deficiency, a winter which is, is worse if you have pigmented skin, uh, and the deficiency of, uh, uh, and the toxic effects of actually what a, was a, a, a bioweapon virus. So interesting, David. So my, my ancestors, your ancestors, will, 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 will have been, um, will, will have had dark colored skin. They're from Africa. And the evolutionary advantage of having white skin is the only one I can think of, really, or, or by far the main one, is to produce vitamin D. So someone came along with slightly lighter coloured skin, they produced more vitamin D, so they survived and reproduced. Yes, and uh, I mean, the, we, in the course of our evolution, we've been subject, subjected to all sorts of external hazards and insults. And for example, after a meteorite impact, and there was almost certainly a big meteorite impact, 13,000 years ago, there would be blocking out of sunlight for a long period of time. And that makes you very, very susceptible, especially to retroviruses. So, so clearly, then, if you're starting with a really low level um, of vitamin D, you're at risk of, of, of running out altogether. And one so, other thing, which I... Sorry, uh, something which no, no, I no, just... Well, no, no, please go on. While I think of it, um, the virus, a SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is one of a number of synthetic viruses that have been created uh, as bioweapons, this virus um, is actually designed to be particularly dangerous if you're vitamin D deficient. That is my belief, and I have a certain amount of evidence to support that, because the furin insert, so-called furin insert of 19 bases, put in between the two components of the spike protein, makes, the, the, uh, makes it easier for the virus to get into the cells. And probably if you're D deficient, other, other, other ways in which vitamin D blocks the entry of the virus are also defective. One, for example, is it acts on on so-called cavioli in the surface of, of cells, and they have an action in blocking the entry of microorganisms. So, you know, it's, it's been designed. Uh, and another interesting thing, which I, I, I really learned when I, when I started to read in detail three years ago about advances in vitamin D, why have we got this synthetic virus which is derived from a virus of horseshoe bat, which uh, was uh, uh, the, the, vi the virus was isolated in 2013 in China, and the virus 
of a pangolin. Now, a pangolin is a lovely creature. It's got armor plated, and it it doesn't get it. It certainly doesn't get in sun sunshine right down to the body. Maybe the sunshine on on the outside if it goes out in the sun. But as far as I know, they don't sunbathe. They live uh, off uh, ants with a long sticky tongue. Now. A pangolin. The chances of a pangolin meeting a horseshoe bat uh, to to be the square root of bugger all, actually, uh, in in conventional English. So what happened was that this this virus, uh, pangolins, for some reason, which I also hint at in the book, are very very popular in China as natural the the the, the scales for. Um, uh, as some sort of uh, improvement in health, that is the belief. Uh, and um, so, pangolins are, are, are being traded. There are eight different species of pangolin, all under threat, and they're being traded across the world into Asia. And some sick pangolins got into Wuhan. I mean, they were they they were they were being shipped into Wuhan. Oh, we've got a sick pangolin. Oh, please send it along. And so they extracted this pangolin virus. And pangolins are also constitutionally vitamin D deficient, just as bats are. So these two mammals, presumably, well, we've got pretty good evidence they did have the mechanism in the course of their evolution that allowed them to activate vitamin D and use it and stop them getting viruses. But that disappeared. I mean, bats don't sunbathe, uh, and pangolins don't sunbathe, and uh, that has meant that these two animals have had to learn to live with the enemy. And if you think about that, it's it's symbolic because they are being used. They, these synthetic viruses are being created in laboratories across the world, starting with the United States, and it's a, it, this is the basic crime against humanity, and right at, vitamin D is right at the root of it. So if you have been forced or constrained to be vaccinated with one of these pseudo-vaccines, what you must do, if you believe in Mother Nature at all, you must get your vitamin D levels up and keep them up. And I don't mean up I don't mean at uh, the sort of levels that NICE talk about in the U UK, uh, you know, of 10 nano or 20 nanograms or, you know, f f more than 50 nanomoles per litre. No, go up uh, five or 10 times higher than that because you need it for controlling calcium, but you also need to have a good reserve in the blood in case you come upon an infection or you're injected with any kind of vaccine. Now, of course, we can't prescribe on this video. This is what uh, David has advised me to do, and that's what I'm doing personally. But we can't tell you what to do. Uh, but th this is uh, this is the academic well, it, position. Well, it's not it's not, a, it's not it's not a drug. No, vitamin D is not a drug. It's an essential compound, just as vitamin C is. So I can tell you, the audience, if there is an audience, <laughs> to take an average of 5,000 units of vitamin D a day for an adult. And if you've got some small children, make sure they get about half that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and per personally, I'm, uh, personally I'm, I'm taking 8,000 at the moment on uh, uh, my, my vitamin D levels were a little bit low. Um, incredible, 1,000 genes. So what we're saying is that if you're very deficient in vitamin D, you'll get rickets. That's these bendy bones, but, but bow yeah. legs. If you're a little bit deficient in vitamin D, you won't get rickets, but you will get immunosuppression, more infections, potentially more cancers. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, it's interesting, uh, um, in the course of, of writing this book, I came upon some evidence that back in, actually in a previous pandemic, you know, back in the, in the 13th uh, 1348, we, we had the, yep. the, the, uh, black death. uh, the black death. The black death is, uh, caused by, uh, 
an organism called Yersinia pestis. I think it's a bacterium. Yeah, it is. But of course, you you need you need uh, vitamin D to fight off bacteria. And 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 uh, the Nobel Prize in in 1903 was given to Niels Finsen for discovering that ultraviolet light was good for treating tuberculosis of the skin. But back to the Black Death, there's evidence from the skeletons in uh, uh, mass graves in London mm. that there was very extensive rickets in the people who died of the Black Death. And of course, they got a, they got a pneumonic plague. Yeah. So it, almost certainly this vitamin D deficiency uh, combined with an industri industrialization and, and living conditions, religious beliefs, etc., avoiding the sun, and uh, dermatologists foolishly advising you you must use sunblock. Uh, you know uh, th this this has created uh, a a a actual bed upon which nasty viruses and nasty organisms can replicate. And it can't do you any harm. I mean, it's almost impossible to get an overdose of vitamin, vitamin D. D if, yeah. you, if you've got sarcoidosis, you can do it because you've got uh, macrophages uh, making vitamin D all over the body. But that's very rare. If you've got tuberculosis, it might do it because you've got a lot of macrophages. But you are... We've done some studies here of nearly 100 people on the sort of doses I'm talking about. My, my wife and I take 100,000 units, which once a month. Mm. And I, I actually take two calcifidials, one, one every two weeks. And I keep my level up around 100 nan nanomoles per litre. Mm. Mm. And mm. no risk of hypercalcemia at all. And you may find that you sleep better and your brain works better. I could always do with that. That's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> so, so um, I mean, sarcoidosis, we're talking about a rare autoimmune disease. I oh, think yeah. I've seen one yeah. case in my career. Yes, it is. And it, yeah. I mean, it's a granulomatous disease. Nobody knows what the cause is, as far as I know. Mm. I mean, I'm out of date, of course, but um, it's, it's, um, it's very rare. I mean, a, oh, I'll tell you one other really important thing uh, relevant here and relevant to the people who've been multiple vaccinated or got a, or equally relevant to people who just picked up COVID-19. When you, when vitamin D is called upon by your immunocytes, your macrophages and your dendritic cells that have various, they, they're all coding for a large number of genes. When that happens, one of the genes that they, it codes for is the gene that destroys itself, a 24-hydroxylase gene. One 24-25-trihydroxy vitamin D is inactive. So it inactivates itself. So when Bill Gates promises us more pandemics, more pandemics and more death, which seems to be his, his and more vaccines, certainly, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy every time. you. And I really would urge everybody who's been vaccinated, first of all, get your vitamin D level measured, but whether you can get it measured or not, Take 5,000 units of vitamin D a day. You mentioned that vitamin A, vitamin A works with, with vitamin D, David. Um, yes, do, yes. I don't think people are short of vitamin A, though, are they? I mean, we can store that for well, months, can't uh, we? Fat-soluble vitamin. Well, well yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. I, you know, you get it from carrots and, and green vegetables. And, yeah. But there are places in the world where there's a lot of vitamin A deficiency. So, you know, uh, uh, as far as I know, I mean, a good market would be vitamin A and vitamin D capsules. But, uh, but basically, uh, you know, you just need to eat a good, decent mixed diet. Yeah. So vitamin A deficiency, just like, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in land lovers like ourselves that eat plenty of vegetables, Vitamin C deficiency is not is it's it's uncommon uh, or rare, 
But if you go to sea for long periods of time, um, you, you definitely need to take supplementary vitamin C uh, in the form of fresh vegetable, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. fresh fruit. And that's, of course, why the, uh, the American term for the Brits is uh, lime is, because yes, we have yes. well, lime, uh, limes on our sailing ships. Well, J- James, James Lunt uh, in the, I think it was 18th century, James Lunt came up with this observation uh, uh, that, uh, you know, he cured, cured um, uh, the, the uh, scurvy, with, which was prevalent. In these long voyages, so a good diet. Yeah, uh, just just let me add one other thing because a lot of people ask, what should you take vitamin D with? Personally, I think just take it with vitamin D on its own. I mean, it's not that you don't need other things. Um, people are obsessed with K two, uh, but I but uh, you should be more obsessed with with vitamin A. And you should be obsessed with having a good amount of zinc, which of course is not a vitamin, it's a mineral, but it acts as part of the vitamin D receptor. It's got four zinc fingers where cysteine binds to zinc, and these are important for its binding to the genome. So there's an interaction between A, D, and zinc, and these are discussed in in our book and illustrated, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So my my last uh, vitamin D, I actually got the doctor to ve- measure my vitamin D after trying for a few years. It was it was eighty five nanomoles a litre, which is thirty four yeah. nanograms a mil. So I'm I'm working on bunking that up at the moment. I'm currently taking yes. eight thousand to try and get that up to the. What do I want to get up to? A hundred nanomoles per litre and upwards? Would you think would be reasonable? Well, between fifty, between well, a hundred. I would say, if, if you think in nanograms per mil, and yeah. the multiple, the, the 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 conversion factors you you said on a program before 2.5, is yeah. two point five. Is two point five. So five fifty nanomoles per litre is equal to one hundred and twenty five. Uh, uh, sorry, fifty nanograms per mil is equal to a hundred and 25 nanomoles per litre. So you want to be, if you're thinking in UK units, you want to be between 125 and 250 nanomoles per litre, which equates to 50 to 100 nanograms per mil. And, you know, you can, uh, I, I reckon that there, 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 there have been some good studies of the use of vitamin D, for example, for COVID-19. Um, a couple of good Spanish studies, or I think there are more, but there was an excellent one, a small study in Cordoba, where they took patients who who were being admitted to hospital because of severe COVID, and they they gave all the all the normal stuff they were using, azithromycin and things like that, and in addition. Um, Two thirds of the subjects were allocated to to vitamin D in the form of calcifidyl. Yeah, the the, the, um, the activated form from the liver. Well, yeah, the the reservoir form I prefer yeah. to call it yeah. the circulating reservoir form. Yeah. Uh, because it's it is not actually active in itself. It's it's got halfway there, but um, anyway, the reservoir form. Um, uh, and of the 50 who who were given that, and this was a double-blind trial, controlled trial, only one entered ICU. Of the other, of the 26 who didn't get it, 13 went into ICU and, and two died. So, the, the I mean, it's a very small study, but we're, people are obsessed these days with massive studies. Forgetting that uh, evidence is evidence, and this was very, very strong evidence, uh, and statistically, uh, P was less than point not 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 one. You know, uh, so the 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 probability of this happening by chance alone, but it makes sense, and people need to realise. I think the world needs to wake up to the fact that big pharma has no small pharma. If, if small pharma makes vitamin D, and there, is, there are three, at least three good companies in Italy making it, uh, 
they're obviously motivated to make a bit of money. That's what, that's what they do, and they make it by, by producing vitamin D and selling it for, I mean, a, a year's course of vitamin D costs about 10 to 15 pounds. It's nothing. And, but a problem is that because of all the diseases against which, which you are protected, or from which you're protected by taking vitamin D, um, big pharma has a really big, they may not realize it, but, they, but some people do, certainly, they have a really big, strong motive for maximizing D deficiency. So with the, with the genetic pseudo-vaccines and with the proliferation of ordinary vaccines, which are... Kids in the United States, in California, are supposed to be getting, uh, whereas, uh, you know, 30 years ago was eight shots of vaccines, you know, things like measles and stuff like that. It's now up to six, more than 60. Every shot you get is going to deplete your immune system or deplete your stores of vitamin D. It's complete madness. And one of the things, I mean... Um, uh, somebody very famous um, uh, in Britain commented, I won't mention his name, but um, commented in an article in, in uh, 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 Royal College of Physicians journal not, not so long ago, saying it's extraordinary that there are people who still don't believe in vaccines. Sorry. They, to me, it's extraordinary that there are people who do not believe in natural immunity and just using vaccines where natural immunity doesn't work on its own. So I suppose the lower that the population's vitamin D levels are, the more antibacterial drugs we're going to sell, the more of these expensive antiviral drugs we're going to sell, the more of these uh, expensive mRNA vaccines, for example, are going to be sold. And would you agree that the more uh, anti-cancer treatments would be sold? Absolutely. What we're seeing, uh, 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 I mean, I was astonished looking at, 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 the, at the literature. There's, there's not a, a cancer that you can name that is not made worse or made frequent, made more frequent um, if you're D deficient. And what we're seeing now with the with the the rollout of these massive rollout of people being hyper vaccinated or well, not actually vaccinated, hyper inoculated with what is effectively a genetic uh, a drug that actually gets into it gets into your genes it gets in uh, uh, into your cells and you, makes you make spike protein which is something made by the virus. And then you make antibodies to that. It's complete insanity, absolute, total insanity. And there are people around who've been up, had, on the recommendations of their doctors, I'm afraid, getting five, six, or even seven doses of a vaccine that doesn't even work. So what is going on? Am I right? Why? In... Who's been... No, I agree. Who's so, been... um... hey. That's oh, the key, that's there's the key there's question. There's Follow the money, isn't there's it? A, there, there, there's a chap called um, William Gates, okay, who said yeah, yeah. publicly, have you heard of him? I've heard of him, yeah. He's, Don't know much about yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, he said, he actually said that the 10, he invested 10 billion dollars early. I mean, I may have got the number out a bit, but uh, but in in um, so-called RNA vaccines, and cashed in at the peak, two hundred billion dollars. That's a twenty to one. Uh, that's not bad, not a bad profit. Yeah, I think he bought just before. I th I, from memory, he bought in September two thousand nineteen. Fortunately, yes. just. Well, a couple of months before oh, the just, pandemic. Yes, by, by, by chance. Yeah, by so, chance. Um, well, well course, clearly uh, a very shrewd investor. Yes. And, uh, 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 and uh, he's our beloved, uh, sold at the end of 2021, I believe, for a huge profit. 
Yes, yes. I mean, uh, the, their, um, and our, I've forgotten the name of your prime minister <laughs> in Britain at the moment. I think it's Richie but Sunak. Richie, <laughs> uh, well, his, his, he's got a, a bob or two invested in Moderna. I think Moderna uh, do assure. Has, I, I think his trust fund now do assure us that there's no financial interest uh, at all. Oh, but, there uh, won't be. No, no, no. No, oh, no, 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 no. There's no, no financial no. interest now at all. Uh, but he did. His trust fund did buy. I think. It, I, I think it was a mere five hundred million dollars worth of uh, shares yes. into Moderna in 2013. But um, I might be a dollar or two out on that. But yeah, yeah. I've, but but no, he has no financial uh, interest it, now. We have to stress that. Oh yes, no, yeah. I'm sure, sure he doesn't. Yeah, I don't actually. Um, I, I, I haven't. Even, I've got no financial interest in, in Moderna, I, and minimal financial interest in vitamin D. I mean, what I do in, I, what I do quite a lot of. I've got a very trusting chemist here in in Italy, and he knows I'm a doctor, uh, and so if I ask for you know fifty boxes of six vials per box which is and that's enough to keep uh, 25 people well for it for it for a year and then i do actually sell it at no profit uh, just to 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 boost people's d level yeah yeah british doctors in march 20 in early 2020 a lot of british doctors died um what what sort of characteristics did a lot of these tragic uh, early deaths have? Well, uh, my co-author David Grum, Grimes and myself, we both observed independently. It was obvious going on to television that the doctors were black or Asian or minority ethnic. Now, um, you'd expect half the doctors dying to be from a uh, minority because half the doctors in Britain, Britain are, are from uh, you know, genetically overseas, uh, from, from Asia and Africa. But this of the first 26 who died, doctors who died, 25 were black, Asian or minority ethnic. Mm. And we, I mean, we, I, we, David and I wrote and put, presented this to the Royal College of Physicians, you know, and there's, there was a real, real uh, sound of complete silence. I can't think of any other reason why darker-skinned doctors would die disproportionately, massively disproportionately, apart from well, vitamin it, no. D. I mean, I mean, they might produce a little less nitric oxide, um, but... I can't really think of any other possible pathophysiological well, they, they mechanism. Probably, they probably work harder than normal doc other <laughs> yeah. doctors. Yeah. They will do. And so don't get out in the sun at all. But, I mean, it, it, it's... Uh, and the same thing applied in the States to... I mean, there was three or four times of the mortality among uh, 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 African-Americans. Uh, and yet, the, uh, so this does make one wonder whether anybody else has has realised this, or whether you, in order to make a lot of money, do you need to be intelligent? Does it help? I wonder. I mean, this is, su this is such a patently obvious explanation. It's just. Yeah, dark skin produces sure, vitamin D more. I mean, I mean, if you've got very dark skin, I'm guessing 10, 20 times more slowly than me, for example. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, the other thing is that when we are species evolved uh, in Africa, it was hot. So much more of the skin was exposed to much higher levels of vitamin D, uh, of ultraviolet uh, radiation and therefore p potentially produce much higher levels of vitamin D. So it may be that, uh, you know, that at very high levels, it was, uh, there was a risk of hypercalcemia, but not at, not at the sort of levels you can get now. And the system uh, is self-controlling. If you take vitamin D itself, 
there's a control step uh, in, in the absorption. There's a control step in the in the liver to, before you get to the reservoir form. It's almost and a homeostatic a, regulation, isn't it, to prevent yeah, toxicity? Yeah, it's bound to be. Yeah, and then and then by the time once once you get uh, once it's activated in your in the cells that need it. Um, it it codes for its own destruction. I, I was well, working you know, in Africa uh, recently and uh, go, going out with some friends, lo lo local medics. Um, it was a hot, sunny day, so I covered myself in sun cream, and they were looking at me and saying, J "John, what, what, what are you what are you doing?" <laughs> and I said, "Well, if I don't put this sun cream on, I get burned." They said, "Do you? You get burnt in the sun." <laughs> And then they, they, these were like doctors and medics, and they, you know, they just, yeah. they, they, you know, the, the dark skin protects you from from sunburn. I think that's the main reason. And uh, well, we're yeah, this strange you, you white tribe. <laughs> but I mean, you can equally just go out for, you know, just gradually get used to the sun. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I never, I go out to mow the golf course and stuff like that. I've <laughs> got a small golf course. It's only very small. I've got four holes, uh, and uh, I never, I never put on sun cream and mm -hmm. never burn. Yeah. No, it's, burning is bad. If you were walking around all day in Africa, you can get pretty. <laughs> I, I would get pretty. Oh, I think so. Yes, yeah. yes, I would. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But you see, factor fifty sunblock, and that that screens out ninety eight percent of your ultraviolet light. You know, factor ten, fact. Take factor five or factor ten sunblock. That might make more sense. Mm -hmm. But even at the end of summer, I mean, I'd been out digging my allotment quite a bit without my shirt on. And uh, my, my, as I say, my vitamin D levels at the end of summer are only uh, 85 nanomoles per litre. And that was what I considered well, a lot yeah, of sun exposure. Yes, yes. And of course, it's only really when the sun is high, high in the sky, mm. when uh, a rough rule of thumb is if you're if your shadow is more than your height, uh, you, there's, it's, it's, it's filtered out, you know, uh, uh, that you won't be getting much UVB. And there's many tragedies about care homes we could talk about, uh, early use of opiates and midazolam, for example. But if we think about the very high, you, very high death rates in, in care homes, and these, the, these people there could have been there for six months, a year, a couple of years, and they don't get out very often. They're inside 24-7. The vitamin D levels would be right in the boots. Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. mean, it should be part of, part of the routine care of someone in care, care homes should yeah. get. Two, three, four, five thousand units of vitamin D a day, yeah. and and as you can, you do, you know you can take a big dose. You can take uh, uh, a, a month's dose at once, one go. So you're taking a hundred thousand units a month. That's roughly about yeah, three, four thousand yeah. units a day. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And I take a bit of calcifidial at times as and, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why were governments around the world, I mean, the UK government actually finally got onto this, I think because the evidence became so incontrovertible, and they recommended an absolute minuscule dose. Why are governments well, around I, the world not, not taking on this obvious science? Well, I, uh, uh, yes, and why, when I sent him a copy of my book, of the first book, with David Grimes, and I, I sent it by registered mail, so I've got exactly the date and time that it was received in number 10 Downing Street. Uh, the, the message should have got through then. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot. To, uh, if you try and get a, a grant from the Wellcome Trust, which depends upon uh, the, the William chap that we were talking about earlier, mm. his foundation, um, you you will not get a, a, a money to support research on vitamin D. It's a big no no. Um, so somebody's telling somebody somewhere that we can't make money, and it's very interesting that 
early, I've forgotten, early in the development of Glaxo, one of the things they did, I think it was Glaxo, um, was they marketed vitamin D. But then they realized there was no money in it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, there's certainly a lot more money in drugs which are still under patent. So we're talking hundreds yes. of dollars per dose very often. Um, do you think so, it's better to... Uh, yeah. Just ask a silly question. I want to see what you say. <laughs> do, you, do you think it's better to prevent disease than to treat disease once it's occurred? I do, I do. <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, uh, in fact, you know, I, I, I went to medical school. I mean, uh, well, I went to medical school in 1958, qualified in 1963. And uh, um, what they taught us then was actually a lot of facts. I mean, the the amount of anatomy the, and the physiology was a bit ropey, and but I mean, uh, we were taught to think. We were encouraged to think, and it was med going to medical school and becoming a doctor. Then, you, you did very very little except learn facts and do a bit of thinking on your way to become to qualify. You were then thrown into in at the deep end as a house physician with you know ten or fifteen admissions a night you know or day. Uh, uh, deep end, you were thrown in at the deep end. Well, that was not very good. But what has been replaced by, I'm afraid, is an uh, is medicine by numbers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what a, what a nice recommendation. So, doctors nowadays, I fear, many are frightened of going against nice recommendations. Uh, it, it's a tragedy, but in a way, um, I'm talking against the future of the medical profession, because if you repleted the whole world with vitamin D, and you have to do this worldwide, because... Uh, it, just being in a sunny country uh, is not enough to get vitamin D. If you cover, cover yourself with clothes or you've got a dark skin. Um, so you might as well, I, I, I did a calculation, I thought it, think it would cost tw about $21 billion a year to make the whole world vitamin D replete. Now, that is probably 1%, 0.1% of the amount of money that Big Pharma has made from, from uh, people being uh, vitamin D deficient and from this, this um, fictitious pseudo-vaccine policy, which is, is outrageous. Mm -hmm. I think vitamin D can protect against, so it, I think inflammation is probably a big one. And yeah. potentially diabetes and dementia. What What are your thoughts on um, inflammation is involved in many diseases, I would assume. And if we could control inflammation, mm -hmm. we can control quite a lot of diseases. Am I, is my thinking correct there that vitamin D will modulate inflammatory processes? Absolutely, yes. It, 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 it codes for reducing uh, inflammatory cytokine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've... Uh, it's not the program to go into, but if anybody looks. Oh, by the way, the PDF file of our book can be downloaded from our website free of charge. Oh, like wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. We'll put that link, of course. But, yes. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. so, you know, it's what what the the right global, this is for, if, if Tedros, does Tedros watch your program? Uh, everyone, I think. Gabriel, yeah. Gabriel Jesus. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. you could tell him, send him the link to this one. What he should be doing is putting everyone on vitamin D worldwide or offering it to them because it will yeah. become obvious. You don't have to force people to take it any more than you have to force people to take a pseudo vaccine, mm -hmm. which they seem to believe in. Um, but if if you tell him to do that, I think you can just then abolish Big Pharma pretty much 
Well, you'd let Big Pharma do what's left. Yeah, they, they, they can pick up the, uh, the, the difficult Obviously, I'm using, I'm mentioning, saying vitamin D. I'm not saying that other things aren't important. Mm. But um, this is, this is the, one of the biggies. Mm -hmm. And if you think of diseases like dementia, uh, diabetes, I mean, the, I, th I, think, I, I think it's fair to say there's a pandemic of diabetes. Oh, really? um, something like 8% of the world's population now or something, it's horrendous. Yeah, of course, no, who, no. whose life hasn't been touched by dementia? Um, well, well, not yours and mine yet, but um, maybe. Yeah, but we, we, well. we've had relatives who've had it, I'm we've sure. Had, we have, yeah, yeah. I mm. mean, I had colleagues mm. from medical school. At one time, I was making a series of medical teaching films. And between four of them, they had four of the major causes of dementia, Alzheimer's uh, uh, and a couple of other, three other causes. Mm. Uh, and um, it's, it's hard to say that, hard to think that there can be a better way uh, of, of reducing your chances of... Mm. It's a good idea to pick the right parents, but if mm. you can't do that, then... then uh, at least keep your vitamin D levels up. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're going to find that uh, people who listen to our, our advice and boost their D levels, first of all, you know, if you're in any doubt, get it measured. Mm. You can go to a private lab and get it measured. In Italy, the charge in the private lab is 15 euros, to, uh, because I'm doing a study, they charge the patient 20 euros for a, a vitamin D level measurement. Uh, I get it for 15 because I'm, d I'm paying for a study of, uh, of, of people. Okay. Um, uh, trying to look at the effects of, you know, what, 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 is, it, what is it? But, um, you know, does, if you've been polyvac, some people have had up to four or five or six the doses of, of, of the, the pseudo vaccine. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you, uh, the numbers are very small because I can't afford a very big study. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's quite clear that uh, whether it's not sufficient just to be no vax, that is not sufficient. The incidence of D deficiency is just as high in the people who aren't vaccinated around us or at least. You know, there are quite a lot of people with very low levels. So they will, uh, as I said, the numbers aren't enough to be able to say for certainty mm. that, that if you are multiple vax, but being multiple vaccinated and not taking vitamin D yeah. is highly dangerous. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, I mean, just in my friends, you know, I've obviously advised maybe, you know, half a dozen to a dozen fairly close contacts to optimize their vitamin D levels and several report really quite significantly improved mood over winter. Um, mm, yes. Seems yes. to protect against I, depression, seasonal affective disorder. Well, I've got one good friend here um, who suffered from lifelong migraine. And he put, he started to take, follow th this advice of taking an average of 5,000 units mm. of D a day. And he swears he's never had a migraine since. So I'm not saying that that's going to work for everybody, but of course. You, you, we're all predisposed genetically to succumbing to different types of problems mm. mm. um, uh, uh, if we're D deficient. Mm -hmm. The incidence, I mean, colon cancer, a whole range of cancers, prostate cancer. There's a study showing that golfers in the United States have a, a much lower incidence of prostate cancer. Of course, they get out in the sun because you can't play golf indoors. Well, you can. doesn't work, really. <laughs> no. So every... Uh, and uh, we do discuss a bit in the book the uh, uh, an example. For example, there's a a gene called BRCA1, and I think there's a BRCA2 gene. There is. And they are, they, are related to, they are related to how vitamin D coding for a particular uh, a, a gene, a particular protein that actually screens you for breaks in your DNA, screens the cells individually. And 
th that will activate if if you've got a break in your DNA. Uh, uh, the the cell there's a, a condition called apoptosis, wiping out defective cells. That's going on all the time. Yeah, the yeah. BRCA is a BR breast cancer gene, isn't it? And uh, I didn't mm. I, I didn't know vitamin. Um, of course, it predisposes to ovarian and potentially prostate cancer as well. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But I, I I didn't know uh, I didn't know vitamin D metabolism was involved in that. That, that that's interesting. Well, this, uh, it, 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 yes. So, sorry, go ahead, David. Well, it's it, it's certainly in, involved in 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 the action. I think of BRCA one, but I mean. No, it is actually discussed, and a lot of references are given as footnotes in our book, so nobody has to to rely entirely on 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 my word for it. Look it up. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, if you if you do a search for any particular disease, look, take malaria. Malaria. Now, uh, uh, Bill Bill Gates wants to uh, have vaccines for malaria. Um, vitamin D deficiency, uh, vitamin D probably helps you naturally fight off malaria. So it's it's um, interesting. It's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, what do you, in your book? I came across the term epigenetic effects and gene expression. Could you unpack that a little bit, please? Well. <laughs> Yes, uh, uh, a little bit. Yeah, just, I mean, a, just a little. Just to, just give us a teaser. Um, the the uh, the epigene. We we are every cell in, in our bodies. Every cell in your body contains the t the same uh, DNA, the same uh, genes, and every cell in my body, and apart from identical twins, no two people are, are the same. Uh, we have, in the course of action of, of, of substances, the, the epi, the, well, the, the, the genes are wrapped around by uh, stuff called chromatin. And I'm really going in off the top of my head here. But that has to be opened up. And you know that in, there's, there are supplementary factors that help the gene when the when your let's say let's for example take the specific example of you've got a cell that's coded to s switch on a toll receptor gene, whatever that is. There are ten of them. There are twelve in the mouse. So the mouse is actually does rather better than we do. Anyway, this this. It, the um, vitamin D has to it, the, it binds to its receptor, and then it they act together. The vitamin D and the vitamin A receptor act together, and they manage to open up a part of the genome, which will vary be different from cell to cell and tissue to tissue, and that seems to be dictated by other factors that are epigenetic, that, that boost the effect downstream. And so that's about, about my simplest and probably inaccurate uh, uh, explanation. It basically, it means that you can have a gene, but it's not necessarily switched on or switched off. Yes, it's, yes, yes. It's post-birth well, po post modification. It, it, yeah, yeah, that's right. And... and uh, then, I mean, if, if, for example, you're immunized against uh, whooping cough mm. or, or whatever, you had, or you've, you've had a natural infection, then we know that, that there are memory T cells that specifically will recognize and replicate in a response to that infection. So that must be an epigenetic effect. Going in, saying, right, if you see this guy again, if you see something like this, you activate. And that, that it, it's, uh, it's complicated, and uh, you're quite right about inflammation, and the, the autoimmunity is another thing. We're, we're coded not to make antibodies against ourselves. 
And yet now, with these spike protein vaccines, pseudo-vaccines, um, we're being coded, we're, our cells are being told, told to make this protein that is harmful for us. I mean, it's, it's complete insanity. And it's just driven by people, driven by virologists, clever, clever, smart people, thinking, not thinking out of the box, thinking within the box, and thinking within the financial box that will make a good profit for them. And then, oh, happening to know that there's about to be a, 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 a nasty little virus, which the evidence shows is, uh, was man-made uh, by questioning, a, getting a pangolin to mate with a, with a bat and a few other things, and, and a virologist to stick in a furin binding site. This sort of nonsense has to stop. And people have got to start looking for the science, start asking the question, and realize that uh, somebody like one of the people, one person we've already mentioned two or three times, with a vested interest. Now, he, this is not normal human beha behavior. And that brings me, oh, well, yeah, let me just say, tell you one other thing yes. that... that I've been involved with uh, with a, a colleague here. Um, we have the feeling, and we put in the case to the International Criminal Court against nine people we judge to have been involved in making a bioweapon that we call SARS-CoV-2. That is to say, the virus. I and mean, there's at least six different unnatural changes. You take the backbone of, of a bat virus, a horseshoe bat, particular one, uh, that doesn't work in, on human, human cells or humanized mouse cells. So you put in a bit from, from the pang, you look the pangolin, pangolin one binds rather nicely, but it doesn't damage them. So, you know, you put in a bit of furin, uh, uh, coding for uh, 19 base signals, coding for furin. You put in a bit of something to make you more likely to get prion disease. I mean, it's mind-boggling. Uh, HIV, the, the changes, the evidence is all there, and it has been submitted by us to the International Criminal Court, uh, mentioning a minority, but a critical minority, of names of people who there for, uh, have been clearly involved at some stage in this process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this has got... And then, some of them cashing in on the same patents. The same patented furin binding site has been inserted into the Moderna and the Pfizer spike protein vaccine. If that isn't a crime against humanity, what is? So, so, so the, the spike protein vaccines, part of the spike protein that they actually make will be the furin cleavage side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in there. And in, 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 yeah, it's in there in between the, the other bits of the spike. Mm -hmm. oh, it's there. And, and it, it makes it, it helps this, oh, God knows what it does. We know with the, the virus that helps the virus get into cells. And they, um, they've known this. They've known this for twenty years. The the experts in Carolina and places like this. So I, th people I, think, have, I think it's worth mentioning that no other human coronaviruses have this furin cleavage site. It's only SARS coronavirus too. That is correct. I, as far as I know, I don't think. Uh, no, no, none of the human inside. ones do. The other human SARS, the, the other human no, no, coronaviruses no, 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 no. don't. I think no. some of the oh, animal no, ones no. do. Yes, yes, and uh, there's a there's a bacterium that um, uh, because the 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 origin of the, this it's interesting the the Chinese who made the uh, uh, did the final putting together of SARS CoV two mm -hmm. they use a furin 
site or they use a site from a natural occurring in a, in a, 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 a virus, a bacterium found in the Chinese Sea. So, whereas the Moderna patent was for the synthetic one, mm -hmm. but the same, as far as I know, same sequence. And um, so, you know, people have to realize when, I'm, I'm sorry, it's taken a, a long time and people are now surely beginning to wake up. And if they're not, have a read what David, David Grimes' analysis of the, the, all of the evidence from all over the world of excess deaths. Um, wake up. Yep. Wake up. Do not ever have another pseudo-vaccine, whoever tells you. And get your natural immunity up. Yeah, G going back to the vitamin D. So, if someone is vitamin D deficient, they're more prone to um, viral infections, bacterial infections. If they yes. increase their vitamin D, how long will it take before their natural immunity increases? Well, I think it 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 it, it, it will be quick. If you take enough, and if you take the reservoir form, calcifidile, uh, it's going to be quicker. It's also going to be, if you're overweight, um, because vitamin D, or if you've got a problem with gut absorption and things like this, you've had an ileostomy, you're much better to take calcifidile, mm. uh, which is... Um, uh, formed in the liver. If you've got liver disease, you should take calcifidile. Um, it's still very, very safe, even though it's got it's halfway towards being activated. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but, I mean um, for, for most people, you're going to the, they're going to start getting some benefit days to weeks after. Oh yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, and uh, um, the, this this is very clear from these studies, the Spanish studies, mm -hmm. especially, and other ones. Now, all, all cancers become dramatically more common after the age of fifty-five. Yeah. Um, if we take a fifty-five-year-old man who has been deficient in vitamin D all his life, and he increases the amount of vitamin D to normal levels and keeps it up in later life. Is he still going to get a reduced chance of colon cancer, prostate cancer? Well, uh, is it too uh, late for me? I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm, I'm 66, but is is it too late for me? Uh, if if my if my, I, if my I, vitamin I, D levels were low till I was 60, I, is it too late? I doubt it because um, I mean the the role. The role within, and again, I'm talking slightly off the top of my head here, but the, the role of vitamin D acting through immunocytes that destroy, you know, killer T cells. The, 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 all the white blood cells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that is most effective at, at, at an individual level, local level. Once the... Once the tumor has replicated uh, ma massively, it's, maybe it's, it's going to be less effective. But that's not the case for all cancers. For example, for myeloma, there's, uh, I believe there's evidence that, from studies that, that individuals with multiple myeloma all, already de developed um, do better with vitamin D, with vitamin D supplementation, so it's hard. Uh, it's, it's an advantage at every stage, to, basically. Yes, yes, uh, uh, um, and um, <clears throat> I, I'm not saying that other forms of treatment may not are, are not in, important mm. in other. Oh, oh, no, of course not. Of course not. No. So the World Economic Forum seems to want a great reset. You want a great biology reset. Just tell us briefly what you mean by the great biology reset. Well, start boosting, start realizing that natural immunity can be boosted, can be boosted with vitamin D and vitamin A and zinc, uh, obviously with... Uh, so... 
the great biology reset and start realizing that we, uh, contrary to what uh, Klaus Schwab seems to think, that we're, we're to be, uh, and, and, and the other, another chap I mentioned earlier, that we're to be sort of somehow phased out. Uh, it brings us back, I mean, they, these guys had been uh, uh, phased out by being given implants of this and that, you know. I mean, these guys, it's interesting, I, you wonder whether they've just literally modeled their, their theories on a combination of 1984 and Brave New World. And Brave New World is, I mean, it's Aldous Huxley, of course, absolutely, in parts, uh, it's a hilariously horrifying book. Uh, 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 I mean, it's just uh, the, 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 the uh, it's worth reading. And they must have modeled themselves on that, you know, alpha, uh, uh, alpha, Alpha minus morons, you know, they're, they're, the, the, the birth occurred in the incubators uh, and they would go up and, you know, in a, in a tall building at the top, you know, uh, uh, and there, there's one guy who goes, they did have a few Christians somewhere and, and uh, that comes into the story a bit, but uh, the Christian eventually falls, falls for uh, an alpha, alpha minus super moron i think and that doesn't do him much good mm -hmm. but uh, uh you know they they have modeled this it's all in those two books basically mm -hmm. and they uh you know we we have to return to to realize that we are part of humanity we are part of biology we're a unique part of our type of biology in a unique bit of space-time and start thinking sensibly. Oh yeah, Bill Gates is spraying stuff up in the atmosphere to fight climate change. You know, he's going to, oh, he's going to make money out of that because that will also reduce vitamin D level. Can we please have less very, very ultra-rich people in the world. Uh, spread that round, and obviously it needs to be spread around by all of the people who've been, to all of the people who've been killed or maimed or bereaved as a result of these toxins, which are going to get worse unless you get your vitamin D levels up and boost your natural immunity. It's all going to get worse. And we certainly don't want any geoengineering, that's for sure. No. Now, I'm tempted to ask you about human beings surviving on other planets, but I'm not going to do that now because we're already at an hour and eight minutes. <laughs> but that could certainly be... Uh, uh, I think you share my view that I'm not optimistic that human beings could survive on other planets. I suspect we have to look after this one. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep that for another day. Uh, so I've started reading um, uh, Professor Anderson's book. Uh, I've just downloaded the first few chapters here from the from the PDF. Okay, well, th this is what it what the hard copy looks like. Yeah, where, where do I get one of those from, David? Well, uh, you, you, uh, I'll send you one. But yeah, yeah uh, but I mean, ev ev everyone. Well, <laughs> okay, well. Uh, I, the print run that we've done, I've done a print run of 500 copies uh, in Italy, uh, and um, I, I think the, uh, most people nowadays seem to prefer PDF files, PDFs. Yeah. So the PDF you can get for nothing. We may ask people to make a bit of contribution to the Natural Immunity in, in, uh, Foundation. That is remarkably but, generous, um, David, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm just bringing out an Italian version because Italy uh, is actually in a very good position to boost its vitamin D levels since there are at least three different companies making money out of selling mm -hmm. vitamin D at a very low, low price. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, watch this space. I've not put it on Amazon. Uh, you know, I, 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 it's it, it, because the PDF file can be downloaded and the website is www.italianmedicine.org 
D, all one word, dgreatbiologyreset.com. Um, um, we, we, we'll, put the, we'll put the link to that uh, on yeah, the top of the yeah. video uh, description. I'm sure you'll get many, many uh, downloads. I mean, I, I put my books on PDFs a few years ago, and um, I, I can't remember now. We've had about half a million downloads of each, I think. It's, it's, uh, yes. Which, of course, is the advantage well, of it being free. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But it is, it's, but, you know, it, it, it's good to know I, that people I, are reading I, your work. Good. And many will read well, yours, and many will listen to this video, I am sure. And do, do get the book. Um, I've, o I've only sort of skimmed the first few chapters for this talk, but uh, uh, absolutely, um, yeah, f fascinating stuff. Well, you, the, the, uh, I'm v very interested in people's comments um, reading to the end of the book because, yeah. uh, you know, that, that is, uh, that's really important where humanity goes now. Um, and we, I'm afraid, you know, we've not reached our rock bottom yet. We, your last uh, speaker was excellent on what's got to yeah, be done yeah, yeah. To, to to put the knife in the world uh, in WHO. Yeah, Philip uh, Philip Cruz's um, video. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I I have a feeling that we have to restore and this is something which i really hope w uh, some lawyers like him other lawyers will bring to the fore of the international criminal court restoring the concept that you are responsible as an individual for your actions just because four people on this have been funded and told by the pentagon to make to do experiments or just in case somebody happens to make a bioweapon virus so we can fight it, that, you, that shows you're not thinking or you're not thinking in an empathic way. Yeah. You're, not, you're, you're not following the edict of first do no harm. The, the defense of I was just doing what I was ordered is not doesn't a defense. Apply. It didn't apply in the Nuremberg trials where a lot of doctors were condemned. None of the biggies got, got condemned. But, um, you know, people have to be responsible for their actions. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is the place to start with the construction of the virus. Because without that virus, there would be no COVID-19 and therefore no reason to give a vaccine against it, let alone a vaccine that falls under the same Moderna patents. I mean, it's, you couldn't make this thing up, really. No, you really couldn't. If it came out as a novel, you'd think I was a bit far-fetched. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Professor Anderson, for now... Thank you very much, and uh, I'm really looking forward to talking again. Um, but, but Thanks for, very much. Tom. But, but, but for now, um, we really appreciate these insights and uh, fascinating uh, academics. Great stuff. Well, I, ho I hope people pay attention. Yeah, thank, thank uh, you. They, they, I'm sure they will. Thank you. Yeah.